Смотрите и слушайте Москву. The life of the capital is in perpetual motion. Even at night, the energy of the metropolis fascinates and charms. But then the city awakes and gets ready for the day. The city is late. It wastes time and gets on edge. And then the metropolis heads underground. Great waves of people flow up and down escalators and along the main lines of the Moscow metro. An intricate underground transit system links remote districts with each other. It transports millions of passengers over dozens of kilometers, fast and comfortable. The Moscow metro is welcoming, professional, safe. The underground network has been rapidly growing along with the capital for 80 years now. And throughout those 80 years, it has been built by Moss Metro Stroy. Yes, underground Moscow is a lively and vigorous place. Here you are welcomed by the dim light of lanterns and the noise of jackhammers against limestone. By the preparation of the ground for a new hall and mechanized tunneling. You are welcomed by the laying of underground path between stations or at depot junctures, and by the decor of the stations which soon will take their first passengers, and by the production of special machinery, equipment, designs. At Moss Metro Stroy, professionals from diverse specialities have come together. For them, the surface of the earth has long been merely a mark on a map, and certainly no barrier. The company has great experience in technologies for building underground and above-ground transport facilities. Moss Metro Stroy manages its projects in both Moscow and abroad from its bright office in the center of the Russian capital. And this is what the underground builders say. Our projects start with a detailed study of the area, be it a quiet, unspoilt nook or a densely populated city district. The home base of our business is Moscow. For us, the capital is a part of a vast landscape on seven hills, between the Akka and Volga rivers, at the junction of the uplands, lowlands and plains. Moscow is crossed by rivers and streams, man-made and natural canals, ditches, marshes, lakes and ponds. Subterranean Moscow was formed by different geological periods, combined in layered jumble of aggressive soils, landslides and erosion areas, water-bearing horizons, quicksands and karstic voids. However, over the last century and a half, Moscow dungeons have been turned into an intricate engineering system of collectors and pipes. All of this is combined with an extremely high development density. These underground labyrinths circumscribe our construction works. But when the decision to build a transport system under the ground was made, these features and harsh conditions were hidden from the pioneering metro builders. Construction of the underground lines required detailed study of different sciences. Together with scientists and engineers, these discoveries were made by hundreds of our engineers and thousands of construction workers with pickaxe in hand. When the first mine was dug and the first tunnel constructed, it became clear that in spite of help from international experts who had built underground lines in London, Paris and New York, 
Soviet engineers would have to reinvent the science of building an underground transport system in Moscow. But why? The mine is flooding. In the severe Moscow soils, through quicksands and four underground rivers, a 60,000-strong army of Metrostroy builders must pass. Formerly, Mos Metrostroy came up with their own specialists and engineering solutions. A shaky earthen passage under the Moscow streets was covered with more and more concrete and turned into the solid vaults of underground tunnels. Yes, the first stage of the underground was built by hand and by shovel. But since then, we have been constantly improving both our construction skills and technologies. Underground Moscow raised questions of ever greater complexity which required non-standard solutions. To build a new metro line, we used a variety of tunneling methods, worked our way around obstacles and built stations at different depths. Hence the difficult segment from Komsomolskaya Square to Krasny Varuta station was built with the help of tunnel panels. Prefabricated segments of double-lined tunnel were constructed on the surface. Then, by applying pressure to water with compressed air, they were sent down. The constructions were spliced by metal and concrete. To install sloped escalator tunnels, we artificially froze extensive quicksands. The area between Ryad and Dzerzhinska station lay in an old riverbed of the Neglinka River. We used a shield driving method, tunneling under compressed air. One of the tunnels was constructed with an English shield, but the other shield was all Soviet. We developed and introduced our own Moscow way of constructing the metro, the trench method. With the help of this method, areas of shallow depth under the alleys of the Arbat were built. This spared blocking above ground transport. So step by step, in a tense struggle with heavy soils and ubiquitous water, our own unique style was formed. One combining functionality, practicality and the beauty of the underground spans and stations. And here, at the World Trade Fair in New York in 1938, the architectural design of Mayakovskaya Station receives the grand prize. Mos Metro Stroy is awarded the Order of Lenin for the second stage of construction of the Moscow Metro. Yes, those truly were years of glory. It was during this time the Soviet school of underground construction was formed and the foundations of the Moscow Metro were laid. Construction of the metro wasn't stopped even during World War II. The underground became a huge bomb shelter, protecting Muscovites from air raids, as well as saving lives and even giving new ones. And what about us? Us? We kept on working. After the war, new stations continued to open. The great ring of the metro has been closed, a 20-kilometer railway route is now in full operation. Underground Moscow turns into a huge construction site. A new construction method is developed and put into practice. A penetration shield at a shallow depth enables us to lay lines at shallow depths under highways and railways, under rivers and canals. Standardized station designs reduce expenditures, while we bring the remote areas of the capital closer to the center. Muscovites living in the large residential areas of Nagatina, Zamoskvarichia and Valkhonka Zil now enjoy comfortable high-speed transport. Despite the difficulties around the country, by the late 1990s we had completed the Lublin radius. And with the beginning of the new century, we have completed frozen projects and continue to build stations that were previously on the drawing board stage. In the suburb of Butova, we are now building a light railway line. For the first time, we're building the Moscow Metro beyond the Ring Road to the south and to the northwest of the capital.
At the same time, we've been building complicated transport tunnels and road junctions for the third transport ring. Constructing Krasnopresnskaya Highway, which bridges the Moscow River, we are laying unique two-tier tunnels beneath Serebrini Bor and building an interchange at the intersection of the Ring Road and Novorizhskaya Highway. And beyond even that, we have started to take on international projects as well. In Turkey, for example, it was necessary to provide Istanbul with fresh water. We worked on the construction of the main water supply system in extreme geological conditions. The complex area of the water pipe ran under the Bosphorus. With the tunnel, our specialist linked two continents in just 15 months. In the fourth largest city of India, Chennai, transportation problems are becoming acute. The population is rapidly growing and the residents require greater mobility. The city needs modern, convenient, reliable, fast and cost-effective transportation. Together with our Indian partners, we are building a large portion of the Chennai subway. So it's no exaggeration to say that we deal with interesting and difficult projects that require special skills and rich engineering experience. And we remember who gave it to us. Moscow is growing. We will need a transportation key that fits these new areas. Our specialists are ready to turn this key, both under and above the ground. Today, the city authorities have indicated plans to increase the size of the capital, requiring dozens of new stations, lines and transit hubs. In other words, the work that we've been doing all along. We combine modern technologies for transport network construction, years of experience in installation and finishing works of any complexity, our own production of construction and installation equipment, with highly qualified specialists and a well-honed management system for solving transport problems of any complexity. All of this is at our disposal. Over 80 years we have become wise, but not wizened. We are developing new spaces with increasing speed. We are expanding on our professional traditions of hard work and bold engineering solutions, true to the selfless work of our predecessors.